<laughs> Why have you never stood next to nobody? Because you studied the 48 Laws of Power. No, nah, man, you could, that's whack. And he knew exactly what I meant because he'd been standing next to something his entire career. Right. He stood next to Biggie. You put hot on him. I stand next to the fight if you want, right? You stood next to me. Mm -hmm. Stood next to Ja. Look, Puffy might be the destination for anybody going nowhere. He's not wrong. Y'all are fucked. Nobody survived. You all are fucked. Look at it. Yeah. Please, people, help me help you. Who's first? A recent video of 50 Cent exposing Puffy for sacrificing Biggie and other celebs has gone viral on social media, with many fans stating he's not the first person to accuse Diddy of sacrificing his bad boy record mates. If you were around when Diddy was known as Puff Daddy, you surely remember how he got the globe rolling with his moniker. During the late 1990s, Bad Boy Records ruled the music industry with a steady stream of singles that dominated dance floors and radio stations with grandiose videos featuring lots of explosions and sparkling clothes. Looking back at the Bad Boy recording artists who have died or just left the profession to join religion raises questions. What occurred? Turns out, some shady dealings were going on behind the colorful veneer of bright colors and glossy garments, and suspicions concerning Diddy's treatment of artists were flying. An absurdly significant number of bad boy performers ended up broke, dead at a young age, or incarcerated for an extended period of time. The biggest surprise was that many artists who worked with Diddy left the industry and dedicated their lives to religion. More than three artists became religious while their rivals lost their lives. Jaguar Wright, a singer-songwriter who has made headlines in recent years for spilling the beans on Hollywood, had something to say about Diddy and how he is the sole survivor at the record label. She stated that Bad Boy Records was founded by five guys, three of whom had already died, one of whom, I'll be sure, was in a coma, and the only person who had survived without a scratch after all the commotion was Diddy, or Honeycomb as she liked to call him. She then went on to say that the other four had all gone through what they had went on the verge of authoring tell-all books. Even Al B. Sure, who happily escaped his coma, was working on his book before the traitor struck. It's as if someone doesn't want anything said, if tell-all books were the cause, they were all dying, then they must know something that someone doesn't want to know. When 50 Cent said that everyone who stood beside Diddy and was linked with him ended up being a failure or broken, the internet ripped him up, alleging he was still attempting to pull Diddy down. But then more evidence against Diddy continued coming out, making his most devoted supporters doubt him. The first story to break was about a 19-year-old successful rapper who left the industry to become a pastor. From 1996 through 1999, Mazer Mason Betha, a rookie rapper with Bad Boy Records, dominated the charts with his first album Harlem World, which went platinum four times. Following his immense popularity, Mace announced his retirement to become a pastor, which shocked the hip-hop community. He declared his retirement from music to pursue a calling from God, alleging he had been bringing friends, children, and others to damnation. He added that rap was not real and that he departed to find and obey God in his heart. Mace's retirement aroused many doubts at the moment. What prompted him to leave the music business? How do you have a 19-year-old rapper named Mace who decides one day to wake up and say, you know what, I want to get out of this shit and be a minister? One insider lamented, he departed and founded Sane Ministries, an acronym for Saving a Nation Endangered, where he now goes by the name Minister Mace after a soul-stirring vision from God. Mace's life could have been saved if he had gone sane. Anyone who wants to do something to you will think twice, the source said. When you're with the Lord, people think twice about doing things for you. Consider this, he is the only one who has come out on top. Loon, who released his first album with Bad Boy Records in 2003, was another musician that gravitated toward religion. After a trip to Abu Dhabi, Loon converted to Islam and formally changed his name to Amir Junaid Muhedith after five years. He abandoned his music career after converting to Islam and afterward relocated to Egypt, where he remained until 2011. Others witnessed unspeakable things while working with Diddy and this might be why many of them Turn to religion. Not only did the artists become religious, but they also quit everything that had struggled to achieve in their lives, to dedicate their entire lives to religion. It was as if they were trying to escape something as if they've seen things that were so unholy that they felt the need to turn to God to recover their sanity. Even Diddy's bodyguard claims that he turned to the Bible because he's seen some devil stuff that terrified him. But as he gets older, Puff Daddy's stories get more unsettling. It's not so much that he's perhaps gay or bi, he wouldn't be the first in the music industry as it is about how he reportedly utilizes it to establish control and domination over individuals. Jaguar Wright, the tell-all artist, said Diddy pushed men artists to commit sexual acts on him for power in a startling video shared on Instagram in 2020. Jaguar stated that she hired an entertainment lawyer who had recently left Bad Boy, hiding the lawyer's name for fear of punishment, and that the lawyer confided in Wright and revealed a disturbing anecdote about her time at the company. When the attorney wanted to acquire approval for some papers, he went to Diddy's office. Wright said, Diddy was meeting with singer and New Jack City actor Christopher Williams about signing a demo deal. 
The door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in. The controversial artist said, when she walked in, she saw Christopher Williams performing Felicio on Puff. That was certainly a strange sight, but it bothered the lawyer more than it embarrassed her, so she kept her cool until Diddy brought it up the next day. He allegedly confronted her and asked if she meant to inform anyone. When she questioned him gently why he hadn't closed the door, he allegedly answered, I'll do whatever the fuck I want in my building. It's power. See, the bad boy founder said, if I could make a man suck my dick, I could make people do anything for money. Wright was convinced that Diddy had threatened her life if she told anyone. You better not try to do nothing to her either, Wright said. She ain't had nothing to do with you being no sodomite, forcing men to do degrading acts just so you could prove how fucking powerful you are. Diddy's former bodyguard Jean Deal acknowledged she wasn't lying after Jaguar revealed her side of the story in a video, saying, I know that for a fact because I was right there. He said, yo Jean, watch the door and don't let nobody come through. I said, I'll watch the door and if I watch the door, and him and a man ran out naked and I said that, ain't nobody told me that. I saw that myself. I'm telling you what I saw. Deal later released another video in which he said that the things he witnessed while working for Diddy inspired him to begin praying and quoting scripture. He stated, I'm the one who came out here, you know, to let you know, I've seen some of the devil shit. Artists who signed with Bad Boy Records were invariably broke, shattered, and traumatized. Some appear to have been framed by the law, while others died young. Others witnessed horrific atrocities while working with Diddy, which could explain why many of them became religious. Not only did the artists become religious, but they also gave up everything they had worked hard for in order to devote their entire lives to religion. It seemed as if they were attempting to flee something, as if they had witnessed something so heinous that they needed to turn to God to regain their sanity. Even Diddy's bodyguard claims that he turned to the Bible after witnessing some demon stuff that horrified him. Diddy hasn't said anything about his situation on social media, and, based on his personality, he will say nothing. Someone once claimed that rumors are founded on a specific truth or a sure lie, but for Puff Daddy, it was clear whether his were facts or lies. One person tweeted, but moral of the story, Diddy was a sacrifice for Diddy and everybody he signed after that was pawns to get richer, my opinion and I'm sticking with it. I wouldn't sign with Diddy even if I was desperate. A second one said, I don't know if the Illuminati is real or not, but if it is, Diddy is definitely one of the generals. Anyway, keep in mind that this video is based on speculations and personal opinions and should not be taken as truth. And that's it from us today, until next time, bye!